know this isn't your typical life is your fun video and I know that I'm not Danny. I want to share with you today exactly how we budgeted for our bus build. <laughs> Now I put a little sneaky poll on Instagram to see what kind of information you guys were interested in knowing from us and one of the top answers was how did you budget for your bus and how did you budget how do you budget for bus life in general now let's start with three basic questions you should ask yourself before you want to build a rig. Number one, what is your income? How much do you make? And number two, how much are you thinking you're going to put towards this build? What's your relative number that you want to spend on your rig based on your income? And number three, based on your income and what you will have for your build, how long can you expect that build to take? If you have a certain income where only five or $10,000 can go towards your rig, but you're budgeting 20,000, you may need to draw out your expectations for the timeline it's going to take you to build your rig. On top of how long you expect to spend on it, another thing to consider is, are you going to DIY your build or are you going to hire a company to do it for you? Those can lead you to different timelines when you're building your rig. All things to consider. So you've asked yourself those three questions. What is my income? How much am I budgeting for my build? And how long do I expect my build to take? Those will give you a realistic perspective and a realistic budget and timeline for exactly what you want to do with your vehicle. Now, the first thing that we considered when we were building was the type of rig that we were wanting. Unfortunately, vans or RVs and having a company build a van or RV or even a schoolie out for us wasn't in our budget. So we knew most of our build was going to have to be DIY, which can be cheaper if you know what you're doing. Thankfully, Danny has a construction background, so he has a lot of knowledge around what to do, what to build, so we weren't spending unnecessary money on things that we didn't need, and we were doing it correctly the first time. The beneficial part to getting a van or RV is in a lending case, you can get a loan on those items. Those items can be used as collateral. So if you don't have the money up front to buy your rig and build it out with RVs and vans, sometimes you can get loans for those types of vehicles for the vehicle cost itself. In my financial background, I don't know if there are types of loans you can get for the actual build process or if van or rig building companies offer those things I'm unaware but I do know for the actual collateral you can get a loan on that if you don't want to put all your money up front towards a rig. Schoolies are a little bit different. I haven't worked with a financial institution that would do a loan on a school bus. Maybe other people have had better luck with that, but I've worked with a few friends and know of a few friends who wanted to get loans on their rigs for buses in particular and could not do so. We chose a school bus that cost us about 6,500, which we paid for in cash. We knew early on in the year that we were going to be building the schoolie, so we had already projected out our income for the year and projected out how much we were going to spend on the build, so we knew we would have that cash in the long run to finish up our DIY build. The second thing that we did when we were budgeting for our rig and what we considered. Once you've got your rig, research, research, research. There are so many articles, blogs, blogs, Pinterest posts, TikTok videos that will explain to you how much someone spent on a project, how much you can expect to spend on doing electrical DIY or budget building your cabinets, doing a simple YouTube search on how much you can expect to spend in a certain area of your build will help you budget better in the long run. We had no idea how much a DIY roof raise would cost. We researched the best RV windows because that was super important to us. We budgeted that out up front and we put it all in an Excel spreadsheet. 
Now, again, I'm type A, so I'm definitely the budgeter, and I wanted to figure out how much can we project that these things will cost based on my research or quotes that we were getting from people, and what was the actual cost in the long run, so that way we can compare. And having an Excel spreadsheet was really helpful to keep us on track and helped us keep a close eye on our spending. Going back to how we budgeted for our bus build, it was very important for us to be super organized on our expenses. We had a limited budget that we didn't have a ton of wiggle room to go over. Spoiler alert, we did end up going over on our projected budget, but I was very on top of what we were spending, in what categories, if we could save money in other places. Again, the way that I did this first was setting up an Excel spreadsheet. This can be as detailed or as narrow as you want it to be. Another thing that we did was had a specific checking account for our schoolie build. So Danny and I both had a debit card that went with our specific schoolie checking where we had squared away money each month for parts of the build. So it was easier for me to organize purchases because all that I needed to do was look at that specific checking. Another way that I tracked expenses was by using an app called Every Dollar. This is an app that I had used for a long time to budget and manage our personal finances, but it also helped in the build because you can connect your bank account with the app so they're easier for you to categorize. And I use this budgeting app to this day when we are doing bus life. It's the best that I've found. I've tried a few others. It just makes sense for me and my brain, but I'm sure if you're thinking about budgeting for a build, you will have your own budgeting apps that work best for you. And I would definitely advise getting a budgeting app so you're staying on track of what you're spending, whether you're in bus life or not. The third thing that we did when budgeting for our schoolie build was realizing what things we could buy secondhand. Not everything in your rig build needs to be beautiful and brand new. And a lot of the stuff in our rig was not. We bought both our RV front door and our refrigerator from a scratch and dent place. Our scratch and dent refrigerator, which is such a luxury, so nice, and it's 12 volt. I believe the refrigerator normally retails for 1200 and we got it for 600 because it has a few little nicks on the front panel, which we were totally fine with. We also bought our sink and our oven from Facebook Marketplace. If you know what you're going to end up needing, scope out Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, different RV surplus stores, so you can end up saving in the long run and basically end up getting the same product. Keeping that in mind, we saved a lot of money on our interior build because we bought secondhand. Number four, when you are budgeting for a build, it can be a lot of pressure to keep track of expenses, to know what to expect, but coming from a type A person, just allow yourself a little wiggle room. Not everything goes to plan. Oh my God, okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay calm. Wait, 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 wait. Stay calm. Everybody just calm down. Some things you have to order last minute. You won't have all the supplies and tools that you need chances are you are going to go over budget. And I would plan to go over budget. We ended up going about $5,000 over budget, which we did have the funds for, and it was to buy a few things that weren't necessities, but that we felt like we would need that were going to last us through the long haul of our van life, schoolie life journey. So budget for going over budget. That way you don't feel stressed when it does happen, you know you're prepared and those purchases don't seem as scary. Also, if there's something that you don't know how to do or don't feel comfortable doing, it's okay to hire things out. We DIY'd almost everything except for solar. That was super important to us. We had no idea what we were doing. And although there were plenty of resources on the internet, it was just something we didn't want to risk. So we hired someone to do the solar build, solar array. If you feel comfortable and confident doing something on your own, I know a few amazing people on the internet who have a lot of resources about 
how to build a bus. I'll link their channels here. If you're looking for some amazing resources, they're both super helpful, amazing individuals, and I think that you'll like their content. Number five, so you've built out a rig, you stuck to your budget, maybe gone a little bit over, nothing to worry. One thing that we made sure we knew even before we started our build was how much it was going to cost us to live on the road. You don't want to budget and spend all this time building and budgeting just to not have enough money on the road or not know what you're going to spend when you're on the road. This is very important and you can use the same principles that you've used for your rig for van, bus life, travel traveling in general. Having categories, knowing what to expect, looking at your resources that are available all over the internet to know how much people spend when doing bus or van life. We had a pretty accurate gauge on how much we thought that we were going to spend. We're spending more or less in certain categories, but before we started our build with the research that we did, we were spot on with how much we expected to spend that's all I have for you in today's how we budgeted for our Schooly Build video. I know that there are many questions about how much builds cost, what to expect, how much Schooly life costs, and how we afford it all. And I want to answer as many questions as I can. We'll leave our email in the description. You can leave a comment if you have any questions. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on those notification bells so you don't miss our video this coming Sunday. We'll see you next week. Bye fam. Look at this snow. It's freaking winter in Michigan over here. Cue the holiday music.